to another episode of Charlie Drives. Here I am at Heathrow Airport picking up my brother-in-law to fix the Boxster S. It's going to be an uh, interesting um, few days actually, but anyway, let's go find him. I found you. You found me. You come to fix the box then. I'm going to try. You're the man. I am. <laughs> sure. Oh yeah. So I picked you up from the airport. You're not jet lagged. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually like on my third wind at this point. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we've got the van. And we're, yeah. We're all gonna, the tools. All the tools. All the parts, we hope. Yeah. We think we've got We hope. We hope. And we're ready to go. We're ready to go. And now we're going to go with the engine. Pick up the engine. Yes. Hopefully the engine will be decent. Yes. The only thing I'm worried about on that thing, as long as there's nothing in it that makes me think it's broken. The only thing I'll worry about, to be honest with you, are the, the headers, where they come in, because the headers and the catalytic converter are one and the same on yeah. the car. And depending on how they pulled it, um, I don't know if the exhaust will be in decent shape or not, but we'll see. Hey Douglas! Yeah, you're a mechanic, right? Yeah. You know a lot about Porsches, I know enough. <laughs> this one's got a funny tick. Do you think I can take it to a track day? What kind of funny tick? So you go ahead and send me a video on your phone of the of, noise of the noise which yeah. I had no fucking clue you can what it was and you can hear it on the video up there but yeah the noise yeah you can hear it on the track hopefully you guys can get better sense of the noise than I could because I, I didn't have a clue what it was if we could have done it I would have loved to have gone ahead <laughs> and actually got a proper tow truck to do it and on the side of it I'd have made a thing saying Charlie fucked it now let's go fetch it <laughs> never mind <laughs> Hey, it's unusual. Most times it's Douglas fucked it, but that's kind of changed over the years. Every single car I touch seems to basically screw up. Oh, Ooh, that's good. Big blind spot. Stuart's Reynolds, did you hear that? I think he wants to race. Go on, you could do a transit. <laughs> and we're at the speed limit. <laughs> never ever break the speed limit. Never. No, Always we would. To the rules we would road. never dream of doing that, would we? Never. Nope. So let's just run through the schedule very quickly. Day one today, picking up the engine. Day one, we're on our way to fetch the engine, make sure the engine is as it seems to be. The gentleman I spoke to that you're buying this thing from actually Chris. Seemed, yeah, yeah, Chris. Um, seems to know that he has a decent motor, so that's good to know. Uh, just to let you know, he got in touch because he watched the video of me blowing the car up. That's right, I remember it. <laughs> YouTube has its benefits. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. That's one more today. So we'll pick up the motor, load it up. We'll go to where the boxer's at. We'll get the boxer off the trailer first. We'll rack the boxer. All right. And then from there, we'll unload the van, we'll unload the engine, and we'll kind of put everything spread out around it, you know, so I can kind of start laying things out. Um, and ideally, um, if we could start draining fluids, um, I'd like to drain the antifreeze, drain the engine oil. While the engine's up in the air, maybe tomorrow morning before we do bugger all else, we'll pull the pan off of it and um, see if there's anything in there with Metal part bits. numbers. I'm sure there is. Do you reckon? Uh, yeah. Do you reckon it's that bad? Typically when they go onto a track all day, you beat the dogs not out of it and they lose all compression. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad when you change the engine oil and something and something comes out with a part number on it. That's not good. You know it's not good. No, no. Okay, well let's see if we can find anything that's got a part number on it when we uh, inspect the oil. That will be uh, that will be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, F-Type, very nice. If you own an F-Type with the license plate wicked. wicked and it's red and it's a P300, we are currently behind you in a white transit. Do you want to race? Do you want to race? <laughs> we reckon we might be able to take you. Ooh, time for another crunchy. Sort yourself out. I still want to plow. You better eat them before they melt. I'm... <laughs> oh! 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 oh. <laughs> really? Mate! I'm glad we're not in a we're not in a nice car. There's another joke to be made there. Oh, oh! Keep it in the wrapper, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. That Mars bar is going to be 
juice by the time uh, we get there. Mm. Good, you like that? Happy to be back in the UK? Mm -hmm. Just let me know when you want to stop for a ploughman's sandwich. And a Coke. And a Coke, and English a Coke. Yep. And a Twister for dessert. Yes. What did you think the tick was? The ticking? Yeah, what did you think it was? Because every time I talked to you, you were like trying to convince yourself, yeah, I know it could be something catastrophic going on those, but I think it's just like a lifter or maybe an exhaust leak or whatever. I don't know. I thought it was just maybe the engine needed a service. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. You're right though, like, mm. yeah, what could it be? Um, I wonder whether it was, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people uh, think it might have been from sort of oil starvation around corners. I don't know. Would you? Would you? What would you say about that? Um, would you say that's a possibility? Going around a corner, you get more ticking as you're going around the corner. No, so not therefore... really. Because to be honest with you, those engines are built to do it. I mean, they have scavenge pumps that live in the cylinder heads okay. that are designed to make sure to keep all that shit under pressure in a vent. Okay. I mean, Porsche. I mean, let's be honest. I'll give the boys their credit. They are the mainstay. You know, I remember watching an ad. I remember reading an ad rather. Um, and there was a, a thing about a Porsche versus some stupid fast Ferrari, and then there was another one versus a Nissan GTR, and there was something else. And all these other cars were faster by like tens. Not much, but they were faster. And then Porsche's response was a Porsche ad, and they said, isn't it nice to be the standard? They're right. Yeah. And their engines are very good to answer your question. No, I don't think so. Okay. I think that engine probably has just had so much abuse. And to be honest with you, let's, let's, let's ask some important questions. So, number one, before you went, did you check the engine oil level in it? Yes. Are you sure? <laughs> I used the... Uh, yes. You I, didn't, I didn't, didn't, you didn't check I did, it on the dipstick. I, I didn't check it on the dipstick. So you have the opportunity to physically go to the back of the car, open it up, and pull out a dipstick as opposed to believing an electrical switch on your dash. Yeah. That is. I mean, I'd do the same thing. Did you change the oil before you went in? No. no. Had the previous owner had any service history on the car? Yes. When was the oil last changed? Um, like three months before I bought it, apparently. Ah. Was it paperwork for that? Yes. Are you okay there? Do you need some wipes? <laughs> Did you bring a hat? Please don't tell me you brought a woolly hat. <laughs> what? I know you. I know you. I know you live in Florida, but. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's a puma. It's a puma hat. Ferrari hat. Love it. You brought the wrong hat, mate. No, I didn't. I brought something worth we're wearing. We're fixing a Porsche. Yeah, I don't want to wear that. <laughs> A boxster hat. Boxster. <laughs> <laughs> My underrated Porsche Boxster is going to get fixed, and then we're going to go take it out on track again. Might check the oil next time. Uh, I don't know about this week for sure. I would like to leave knowing that the car ran when I left. It will run. Yeah. I have no doubt that it will run. So we're going to be good. We'll pull the plug. Yeah. We'll grab a wrench. We'll spin her over. We'll see what she feels like. Ideally, I'd pull all six plugs and just feel it. Because obviously, when the spark plugs are in there, because it builds compression, yep. it makes it very hard. But if you can pull the plugs, you can actually kind of feel, you know, how smooth it actually is. Cool. But then again, to be fair, you also want to feel it with a bit of a load on it too. You do it long enough, you know what feels right. It's kind of like sex. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Cool. Well, engines. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. You're going to do all of that, That's yeah? How, how do you do a compression te test on these things then? Well, there's two ways of doing it. You can do a cylinder leak down test. Yeah. Are we different. not going to do any of that today? Fuck no. Oh. This is the only option we've got. We've got a week to put an engine in a car. It either works or it doesn't. If the shit looks good to go, we're going to go the next step, which is to buy it, bring it back, and put that fucker in. And okay. See what happens. You nervous at all, Charlie? No. Have to, you, you really are going to have... How much money do you think you're going to have in this car at the top of the 8,000. 
8,000 pound for something I paid less than 5,000 pounds for, don't forget. Dude, you're talking to a guy that spent 30 grand on a $500 Mark II Astro. <laughs> you're fine. Oh God. History loves company. Right, I think this is it. So, we've had a look at the engine and now we're gonna do a bit of an inspection. So let's see how it goes. We will do the cooler while we're there, yeah. which if you haven't done one, I suggest they should fail. Yeah. Do you know what this one is? Dual. It is a dual? Oh, shit, well if you needed a single, I could have given you a single, because I bought both. So I wasn't sure which yeah. one this would be. And in fact, if I look at that, that one's already had an IMS bear and done in it. If you look at it, I'll tell you why. <laughs> I know it had a lot of footage, but I didn't get it. It looks it like it has... Kicked me in the arse. So if you look at this one here, that's a factory Porsche one. See, it's six-sided nut. Whereas all your aftermarket ones, whether it's LN Engineering or Jake Raby or whatever the hell he calls it, they're all, they're all typically like so this. So shine it on there. See, it's a, this one's already had an IMS bearing done once. If we run into a snag, this old boy's got enough to get us out of the jam. This will be going in there. Whee! And I'm glad that I brought a rear main seal because that bitch was leaking too. Okay. You see where it's all wet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll clean it up as best we can. I mean, the oxidation on the aluminum, there's really not much you can do about that. It is what it is. Is it okay? Sorry, aluminium. Yeah, come on, man. You're Sorry. in you're in England now, man. I know, I know. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. Nice. There's a the plug. They're not covered in oil. You have to watch plugs. You can always tell the age because they get what they call corona staining, which mm -hmm. is where you get the brown lines that blow up. Yeah, these you don't get that on there. None on these, no. Which means it just probably had a tune-up not long before it got wrecked. Yeah, they look all pretty reasonable. Oh, there's three of them out. Alright, so, now let's see what this feels like. Huh? That's fine, just like that. Chris. Let's head to this engine now. This head to the engine the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we slated on the no internet. <laughs> Yeah. Alright, so we've got the engine in the car. You've had a look at it? Yep. Happy? Well, engine in the van. Chris Not is happy? Dutch, happy. <laughs> you're happy, aren't you? Lovely. <laughs> but you've got look. Let's yeah. go have a look. There she is. What you can see from inside the valve covers. Clean. She's clean. Squeaky clean. Clean. Clean engine, mm -hmm. nothing, nothing, nothing. No, no metallic paste. No metallic paste. No metallic paste. No part numbers in any no of the metal bits. Yet, at least not <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably see part numbers in my bet in my metal bits and in, in the box <laughs> that we'll be putting this, this engine into. So yeah. Uh, anyway, all right, let's do this. So step one complete. We treat the engine. Way. And in the next video, it'll be running, right? All right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's go. McDonald's, here we come. Good <laughs> one. <laughs> we have the engine. Chris is tits. He's legit. Nice chap. And he had beer. And some. Which you got to drink. I only had one though. I know. I'm and two or three uh, swigs of this peach right, snaps. Right. I'll get the sound up going. Okay. Get it in the hole. So you think that engine's gonna be all right? It'll be fine. Yeah? It'll be fine. So, what you guys don't know, that we figured out, is that the motor itself, while it's in good shape, there may potentially be a little bit of an issue with timing because the oil pump was pulled off the front and then turned. So that means that the, the, the uh, timing could potentially be just a little bit off if it's jumped, but tomorrow, we will find out if that's correct or not. I haven't slept for well over 24 hours at this point. So, yes. Good job, mate. Splendid. Good job. And um, I don't feel like fucking with Porsche timing right now. So we'll do this tomorrow. <laughs>